previously on Workshop Wednesday. How cool is that? We got the whole lot out in one go. Another gear on it. Now that both sides of the diff housing are off, it's time for Bo to finish stripping it apart. First up is this bearing inner. Once that's off, we can have a go at removing the outer planetary gear. Then we do the same on the other side, and finally we should be able to remove the internal shaft and helical gear. should be a spacer, that piece. Another spacer. That's all that is. It's just a spacer. It's not threaded on or anything. It's just a, a tight fit. Sits up against the bearing inner to stop the bearing coming out. Stop the bearing inner coming out. So really, we should be able to get a bloody puller in there behind that pull it off. No oh, good. What's it doing? It's pulling the roll around of the bearing. Uh, but that looks like a move. I don't think it did. Wow, what's that, Bo? Oh, I don't know, water? <laughs> <laughs> here. A bearing and then a spacer. Oh, this piece this piece purely is just there to stop the bearing coming off. On there like that and then this goes here like that. So that's just a spacer. A spacer on a spacer? A spacer on a spacer with a locking washer and then a nut. Right. Simple. It is simple. All of this German stuff is actually pretty simple. It's not as complicated as everyone thinks it is. It's, it's just designed complicated. But everything is made simple. It's still a little bit of a mystery how this all goes together. Bo has a sleepless night ahead of him as he gives it all one last look over for the day. nut all the way back onto this one here and just pulling that out then is giving us another eight mil this should fall off stepping away from a project and returning fresh always helps yep. so that's not that's no longer attached to that anymore so we should be able to pull that whole thing straight out 
Another spacer here. Hang on. That's a part of the bearing in it. See that? Ball bearings have been sitting. It's actually curved. So that's a part of it. The bearing in it. Yeah. So there's two halves to it. So you've got a you've got a bearing in it that goes halfway and then this one here meets up to it to complete it. Okay. Hopefully we can buy them like that. Same type of bearing, say you totally would. It's perfect. Like splines usually because they're they're tight, like a spinal should be a perfect fit. Or pretty pretty close to perfect. And that pretty much seals itself from getting anything in. It's too tight. Time to move back to the opposite side of the diff housing. We disassembled this without the aid of the acid bath, so the planetary gears are still attached. It's since had a soak, and now we know how it all goes together, it should be a lot easier. By hitting the bearing puller under tension, Bo is hoping that the shock will cause the piece to release. The spline is hollow, so Glenn has turned down this round bar so that the bearing puller has something solid to push against as it pulls the planetary pack away. We've also used a lot of lubricant. I didn't see any movement, man. Are you serious? We've got the drawing here, but it's not helping us. Yeah. Morale support. You gonna help? Or what? <laughs> After a closer look down here, it seems as though the gears have rusted solid. It's time to turn to Old Faithful. So that, what happened was it was so so badly rusted on that bloody bottom planetary. It just wasn't. It was just that stuck in there. So that's just fixed it. Oh my god, that's made my day. I can go home now. Not really. <laughs> it's only been two I, hours. I don't want to go home. <laughs> I, I want to see what's next. I think right. everyone else does too. We're going to need to do this. There it is. You can hear all those German sausages in there sizzling away. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the planetary pack. Wow, that is on there. It was here that we noticed some handmade markings. If you think you know what these marks were for, 
let us know in the comments. Could be a number of teeth. I'm not sure. Is it on the other one? We don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't had a look at it. I just noticed that just then when we pulled this out. It's actually got it next to it again there, you can see. It's sort of scribed into it. 38, 38, that could line up. Absolutely nothing. It's all slippery from that oil I put on there. It's moving. It's moving. <laughs> it's the Germans. Because it's the German. That's the thing. It's complicated, but it was so well made that it's still in good condition today. As you can see. Like if this, probably, if this was American, it probably wouldn't undo. Or British. <laughs> or Russian. Or, or Russian. No, they would, this wouldn't still be here if this was Russian. <laughs> okay. It's really slippery from that acid sort of stuff that's in there. piece of it's been been hit. It hasn't though. No? The other one's exactly the same. Maybe it's something to do with this um this key this keyway in it. Yeah who knows. Yeah. How did we do it last time? I can't remember how we did it. This is a bit more elegant than the other side. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. A little bit. Whatever works eh? Hey? Yeah. Start losing this puller now. Wow, check it out, it's so clean. Closer and closer. All that's left is the shaft and helical gear. The whole differential is assembled from one side, packed hard against this circlet. So that would be to space the circlet. So possibly when they've made it, the bearing had movement inside when the two circlets were on. So that they've spaced it with that, that shim there so it didn't have any movement at all. It's always the same story, that one side just doesn't want to move. Cool, yeah, now you can see this. So this is the sort of effort they went through with their tanks. And there are still people out there who wonder why they lost the war. It's like paper thin.
inner is aluminium on this. The bit that houses the ball. How's that one going? Pretty good. Pull out. Inner. This here is actually not aluminium, this is a brass inner. Cool. There's all these tin, tin washers. <laughs> I'm going to get these off, see if this is causing any trouble. Look at the bloody end again. Big spline on the shaft here. And it tapers up and then you've got a thread here. That's some really incredible engineering. Right. Alright. Grab the shaft. Grab the shaft. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Did it. Finally, all that work and we have both helical gears. Unfortunately, they don't look usable. The case hardening is compromised and we would risk the integrity of the entire differential system if we were to use them. On the bright side, everything else looks good enough to make use of. Bye. It might be okay. Very happy, yeah. We got everything apart without destroying any um, critical sort of components. Uh, just a few bearings that we can't, can't use anyway. So now we've got everything everything out, all the gears, planetaries, everything. We're just gonna clean them up, probably sandblast them, um, and then get them, pretty much get all the dirt and everything off of them, clean them up, oil them, and just set them aside until we're ready to put everything back together again. We were lucky that the differential for this vehicle survived, but honestly, I thought there was no way anything inside could be salvaged. And yet here it is, ready for blasting and priming. A few days later, Bo started to clean up the planetary gears and check it out, they spin freely. We need to disassemble them further to make sure they're not too badly corroded inside, but it's looking promising. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and we'll see you on the next one.